boys. You're live. Hey. <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> Good morning and welcome to this edition of Unwanted Opinions. I'm your host, Justin, here joined with co-host, stand-in co-host, Jesse James. Good morning. Executive producer, Dave Miller. And special guest today, Mr. Tony Ortiz. <laughs> morning <laughs> it's so funny to me that we'll be having full-on conversations i'm gonna pick on you a little bit but yeah. i'm picking on everyone that's been on the show because we'll be talking loud and enjoying and laughing and then the moment it's time for like to get on the mic <laughs> yeah I, yeah i just uh, i would tell you this like <laughs> wait we just had a full-on conversation yeah. where you're talking at a level way up here well it's just it's weird to be on mic yeah, yeah it, it is. Yeah, and I think I've just been doing it so long. I know the, the you know the first couple of weeks that Matt and I did the radio show, <laughs> it was god awful. <laughs> completely nervous. I would just be sweating the entire time, you know, like, and and I forget that because it's been so long that like oh even I was once nervous to do this, but I, was that on video? Was it live? It's yeah, it's on. It started when we did the show. The first show started with live video oh. going. So, so how do we, we need to find that? Yeah. It's somewhere in the Go archives because okay. um, we didn't do the videos on the unwanted page until we started the podcast that was always done and shared through the goat. So it's out there. And that was back when I think I wore ties every day is when we started. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. My teeth weren't uh, veneers. <laughs> There's just a <laughs> lot of differences there. Uh, um, I got to look back at that. Yeah. Cut that up. And There's clips. So, some of the older stuff is good, but I mean, the first you know, probably two months is, I would imagine, god awful. Like, I remember, like, we talked about, like, pizza toppings, you know, like, because he likes pineapple on pizza, and I don't like, <laughs> right, it's stupid, yeah. you know, but, like, and it was just, it, it was just, it was hard. And I remember, like, someone calling into the radio, like, because it was a sports station at the time, and they're like, <laughs> are there two idiots talking about, like, pizza toppings? <laughs> And I'm like, okay, I'm going to take that constructively. Like, I'm not even upset. Like, yeah, you're right. We probably could have done better. Even though, like, we got some, like, heated opinions from other people about yeah. pizza toppings as well. Like, you know, how do we, like, bridge that gap of, like, actually talking about current events without, like, saying stuff that could make us lose our jobs, you know? Yeah, mm. it's, a t it's, a, it's a fine balance. Yeah, it is. And even still, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. And it's, yeah. Believe it or not, it's not gotten any better. <laughs> the polarization has somehow seemed to have gotten worse. What's your favorite pizza topping? Oh. All of them, except for I don't like sweet stuff on yeah. my pizza. So, like, I like pineapple, but I don't – I just don't – and, like, I'm not going to chastise you for putting it on your pizza, mm -hmm. but it's not my choice to have it on mine. But I like anchovies. Like, oh. if, when you, if you say supreme, like, all the toppings, I'm like, yeah, all the toppings. Run it. And they're like, oh, this literally happened yesterday. And they're like, oh, and, no, and not anchovies. Like, that's not all the toppings in it. Wow. But don't say it if you don't mean it. It's aggressive. All right, can you talk for like 12 seconds while I share this? Yeah. What you, uh, you do pineapple on pizza? <laughs> not at all. Uh, no, pepperoni, extra cheese, that's it. Yeah. You yeah. ruin it with all that other stuff. Yeah, what? So I like agree. a classic New York slice, the one that's bigger than the plate. Yeah. And, you know, that's it. Yeah. You don't need to get fancy with it. Completely agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, pineapple on pizza. No, hold on. You you don't. It just you said pepperoni and cheese. Yes, pepperoni and cheese, man. Classic slice. I, you you <laughs> no, not even sausage. I mean, I. I can't believe we're revisiting pizza, pizza toppings. Right? So it's you know. Yeah, that's what Matt but, said. Are there are there two idiots on air talking about pizza? Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of fruit that's not pineapple, oranges. This will be the lowest output of oranges Florida's um, produced since 1945. Wow. Uh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, <laughs> citrus greening. It's like volleyball. So citrus greening is, um, is like a weird disease that they don't really have a, a, like a, a cure for, I guess you could say. They don't have a treatment for it, and it usually comes from infected bugs. And so it's 44.5 million... 90 pound boxes is what we're going to put out as opposed to like years past where we've put up words of 200 million 90 pound boxes. So when we have all these supply chain shortages, now here we are going to deal with a freaking orange juice shortage, shortage. because, and it's not be necessarily because supply chain, it's just because this is just happens to be one of the lowest crops that we're going to put out in, you know, 
80 years, which is kind of nuts. And it's not like we even have like a bad freeze or anything. And most irrigation systems for like big um, orange crops are like set up for that, you know, freeze irrigation anyway. But yeah, kind of a crazy thing. It's one of those things that's like, you know, it, it's, I'm not going to say it's a silly thing to talk about, but it's something that most people, it's not going to be a topic of most conversation, but then you're going to go to the store and you're going to be like, wait a minute, why is my box of orange juice $5? Like, right. Well, because the cost of production is now skyrocketed because now we're going to be importing oranges from other countries and California. Mm-hmm. And this will be the first year, I think, in like a long time that California will outproduce us in oranges. That's wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think so, there's going to be less pulp orange juice? More no no pulp? Probably yes, because a lot of it's going to be condensed and made from concentrate, I would assume. I would assume. Like, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, they know their sales numbers better, what sells right. well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure concentrate probably has its market, you know? <laughs> are, you, are you saying you are not a pulp fan or you are a pulp fan? I mean, I'm not – I don't like a lot of pulp. I do. I drink that uh, that aloe drink that has like yeah, the chunks. Yeah, yeah, the chunks in it. Sure. I mean, a ch- I feel like a chunk and pulp is different. Yeah, that's how I like my milk too. Chunky. Yeah. Like cottage cheese. <laughs> <laughs> With pineapple. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank here we go. That business minute. Full circle. Yeah. <laughs> On to new news. Yeah. yeah. No, I just think it's crazy because that's one of Florida's biggest crops. And you, you know, I'm I'm that guy, and I hate it. I try not to. But uh, the last time we were in Claremont as a family, I was like, "Look at all these. <laughs> this used to just all be citrus groves, you know." <laughs> and like to the point where my kids were like, "Dad, can you just stop telling us that?" Like, and I'm like, "No, but you don't understand." Like, I used to drive to my aunt's, and we would have spend 50 minutes in nothing but citrus yeah. groves, and now it's like nothing but traffic and like. You know, homes that all look the same. It's like Carney Island. Minute yeah, Maid used to own area. all yep. of that, and now it's all. And then some big freeze came through, killed out all the crops. Wow! You just got all these dead trees out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's wild. Yeah. Wait, so you're saying like the entrance into Carney Island, those citrus scrubs aren't growing right now? Not that I know. Of. I don't know. I haven't been up in like six years. Oh, okay. <laughs> gotcha. Minute Maid Same. doesn't own it anymore. Yeah, yeah. That. that's wild. Yeah. I uh, I was on a trip with one of the heirs of Minute Maid. Oh. And uh, <laughs> I don't know right. if I can. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Go ahead. Yeah. Tell us more. Yeah, it did sound like humble brag. I didn't mean it like that. But You're he was on like, the uh, seats. "What's that?" Yeah. But <laughs> I shouldn't tell the story. But I'm going to. Uh, but we, I was told that he was sober. Like, yeah, he's, he's been sober for this many years. We, you know, had a kind of conversation, and then we took this like paddle boat trip in Chattanooga. And next thing you know, he's just like slamming them back, like has taken over the piano that was on. The... Well, I just spit everywhere. He took over the piano that was on the like paddle boat. The guy's just like, uh, yeah, I guess you can play my piano that I get paid to play. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I thought he was sober, and they're like, yeah, he's gonna have to give that token back. I'm like, oh no. Oh, wow. Like ah, uh, well, so Christy chimes in and lets us know that citrus growers will put a specific that specific kind of lime. Finger limes. Keep, yeah, finger limes to keep the bugs out. Wow. So it's a deterrent, but it's not a. It's not. You can't fix citrus greening. Once it happens to your trees, that's it. Well, I don't think it's it forever. I think they can come back. Okay. Maybe I don't really know. So um, indoor agriculture, there's a lot of that going on. We actually have some of that industry coming into the city, uh, and I've been kind of learning a lot about it. And it's interesting. pretty interesting. Very interesting. The yields that they're getting out of that some of, some of that stuff is just crazy oh yeah well, i mean what do you grow indoors <laughs> he doesn't grow anything indoors well, yeah, no. yeah, he... <laughs> so <laughs> it, these are vegetables. yeah these are some of the um these are some of the marijuana facilities that are coming in but i've also seen it for like tomatoes and different yeah. things in areas where they're not they usually can't grow that type of crop right now they can grow it because they can control the environment and from what i've seen in some of these buildings it's it's interesting like the way that they can put the uh, shine the light on well the lighting is is is, yeah. is the difference maker we we just got one of those like countertop um like herb you know kitchen herb things yeah yeah, yeah, with jumping, the, the in the, jumping in the space yeah i'm in the space i'm in the space nice. and uh we turned it on and it was like oh it's so bright <laughs> and uh it was like well how long does it stay on you know right 15 hours oh, wow. so then i started reading up on it because i was like 
oh, I wonder, that's probably why it grows so quick and so well is because it's getting extra light. And so then it it led me down the path of like indoor grow operations. And I I worked on an organic farm where we had um, like backyard style farming. And then we had a greenhouse that we like literally pulled down piece by piece and re-put back up. Right. And uh, once we put the greenhouse up, it was insane. Like we had had a smaller one, but once we put the big one up, like the yield just right. from the greenhouse right away, like, oh my gosh. So it was organic. So we didn't use any pesticides or anything. So I had to go and hand pick bugs off, right? I hated it because, you know, I'm out in the, the garden just nonstop, just yeah. picking bugs off with my hand. <laughs> and then once we got the greenhouse, like, don't get me wrong, there's still bugs, but a fraction i mean an actual oh. fraction of what was what i had to deal with outside so it makes so do sense you keep a garden now no okay. you know we i've talked about it um i really would like to but our the way our backyard set up like yeah. it would have to be like right in the middle of the backyard right and so i'm like ah eh, no but we we kind of like hey i'd love to have more space so i can have a garden mm-hmm. you know and have like a spot to put my all the crap that i have so yeah, I don't know. Do you guys have a garden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We this this year is kind of in the first year of it. Uh, we did eggplants, uh, complete fail on some peppers, which apparently Pe- peppers. Are, we, I know yeah, that was like the easiest right, thing you can. I don't know what happened to them. I screwed the, the whole soil thing up, I think. And then Olivia bought a bunch of um, lemongrass, and so the oh, lemongrass I love lemongrass. Is yeah, easy, and that's like the easiest thing. To lemongrass and rosemary, like those two yeah, things, like you just yeah, like that's that. yeah. well. Rosemary specifically, it's just a really oh, you yeah. know tough plant. Yeah. Or like basil is not like you've got to like really watch right. basil. But rosemary is just like it'll that and lemongrass will take over. Yeah. So uh, yeah, lemongrass is good for tea and stuff like that. Yeah. So what are you guys gonna use it for cooking? Um, yeah, I've already cooked up a couple of the eggplants. They're they're coming nice. in now. It's been it's good, you know. I hated eggplant as a kid, and yeah. now I'm like, okay, it's tolerable given enough like. Yeah. Stuff on yeah, but with with like most vegetables, I gotta have them a little al dente, because uh, <laughs> it's a texture thing. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. 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 Kind of like a mushy. I do not. Yeah, yeah, not at all. Yeah, someone cooks it right. Yeah, it's great. Well, and some people like it mushy, but I do not. Yeah. Anyway, that's our orange crops information for today. Hope you all do with that what you will. Uh, tumblers on the rise. What does that mean? So is that where people roll? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, gymnastics where they're uh, they're jumping. No, I'm just kidding. So Tumblr, I didn't even know what Tumblr was for the longest time until um, it started going away. Basically, Tumblr was like uh, a mixture of Instagram and Facebook. Tumblr, you could do images and text before. It's like a blog site, right? Yeah, it's like a mini blog site is is exactly what it is. It says you can express yourself, discover yourself and bond over the stuff you love. Yeah, usually so what Tumblr was was like <laughs> what what people would call like woke now, right? It was like people like very in tune with their feelings. Is it similar to Reddit? No. No? No, not at all. I, I always imagine those two being in the same. Me too. No. I mean, <clears throat> you. I think you have um, maybe likes and dislikes like you have on Reddit. But but so so let me, let me get a little bit further into it. So it sold in 2013 to Yahoo. I remember when this happened, it was $1.3 billion that it sold for. And that's why I was like, oh, my gosh, man, I got to do a social media <laughs> site. Like, that's crazy. And then in 2019, it had been devalued so much. Like it was, Yahoo was bought by like Verizon or something like that. And they ultimately sold it in 2019 for $3 million. So from 1.2 wow. or 3 Shut billion up. to 3 million. But now it's kind of, it's on the rise again. And it's all, Gen Z is the majority of the new people doing it. It's 61% of new users are Gen Z. And when they're like pulled, I'm like, wait, why are you on this? Well, because my mom and aunt aren't on it. Uh, You know, like basically because it's not what a lot of people are on, which is what Instagram was for me, you know, 10 years ago. It's like, ah, I'm going to go to this one. It's a little bit different, a little more anonymous at the time at least. And a little less wordy. It was all pictures. And so this is like my family's not on it. Um, It's got chronological order and no real algorithm. I'm already sold. Yeah, and so chronological order, we talked about it last time with Instagram, like more people want that than don't want it. You know what I'm saying when I say chronological? Mm -hmm. So when Facebook and Instagram started, you literally, 
if you scrolled, it was like this is the most recent post to this is the oldest post, and that's the, no like algorithm. No algorithm. No algorithm. Right. You saw it in the in the order that it came in, and you saw stuff from people that like. I look at my friends list now, like I'll go to try to find someone, and I'm like, oh dang, I'll see a name that like, man, I, oh, I what they just not they just must not post anymore, and then I'll click on their profile, and I'm like, oh, they post all the time, I just don't see anything, you know, mm-hmm. I see the same like 20 percent of people, yeah. if that all the time and so and you know like half of them are like i just keep them around because i I get entertainment out of what they post not for the same reason they're posting (laughs) you know like they don't mean it to be entertaining but it's entertaining to me so um so chronological feed is just you you get it as it comes in and a lot of people really like that but they took it away because it's easier to just go all right i'm done as opposed to i'm going to feed you things that i think you want to see right which in most cases are like things that make you angry right <laughs> you know like <laughs> fortunately for me most of my social media feeds are not that cuz i've like i try really hard to curate it that way but i do see the same stuff over and over so as chronological order and no real like major algorithm um which I'm sure will change, you know, depending on... I think WordPress still owns it. Um, but I'm sure it'll change at some point, as it always does. Like, how can we fit ads into this Yeah, especially a if it gets better. more popular. Right. Um, and continues to grow at that rate. That's I think it's weird that Gen Z is on it. Well, you think of Gen Z. I don't know if you know anyone in that age range. But, like, if you do, that means they're already kind of old soul anyway, because they're hanging with you. <laughs> 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 but uh yeah a lot of them aren't really on facebook or instagram or if they do it's like you know they have two different like lives that they're living like this is the one that i have for my like facebook they're is for my Insta family and they're thin still <clears throat> with the fake account That's yeah like well it's like uh it's like a feed account I, uh, that was weird for me too because it's like oh this is just my spam post for basically like here's the one where i want to be like uh uh, Insta model, yeah. <laughs> an Insta model, and then here's my account where I just post what I what I want to post that I think is funny or that I like. So it was a good save. Yeah, that was my thought for the day. Uh, <laughs> I always thought it was more like so you know you have those two sides. You have the side you go around with your friends, and then when you're around business, right. and you kind of put both off because. That generation had to deal with what well, we did too, but right. you know, hey, you're going in for your uh, interview, and now they're seeing, they're looking at your social media, right. so you want to kind of keep one, yeah, you know, less tainted, you know. Yeah, and there's like there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, back and forth on whether you should have. Like, you should allow employers to see, like, hey, this is the person that I am. This is what you're getting yeah. into. And then, of course, there's the side of, like, no, that shouldn't be a consideration at all. I can tell you this. As someone that does hiring, I'm looking at your social media, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, I'm of a mindset that, like, I can filter through, like, oh, are you just, uh, you know, did you say a cuss word and that's okay with me? Like, or are you, like, constantly posting, you know, these extremist views, like, What's that going to mean, you know, down the line? Yeah. You know, like I do, but there there are times where I'll look someone up and I'm like, oh, <clears throat> I like this person. Yeah. They're going to be a good fit for our our team. So it's affected your decision before. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah, without a doubt, okay. and 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 both ways, yeah. It's yeah. it's never just a minus. Sometimes it's like, oh, this person seems like they're going to be a really good fit for the team. Yeah. Um, and if they're totally not on social media anywhere, I think two things. One, I think. Um, all right, they're on the job hunt and they're serious about a job hunt, so they've taken their social media down, and good for them for having that wherewithal. Yeah. Um, or two, what's wrong with this person? What are you trying to hide, pal? Yeah, but I feel like if you're taking your social media down because you're trying to get a job, you're hiding something. I mean, not that you're really gonna know. Well, I, I'm gonna say that we're probably our office is in the minority of how we handle hiring people. Like we do background checks, but we're like, nah, is it bad enough? Like, nah, yeah. you get like, we're a very forgiving office. Yeah. You don't have to have a degree for any position that you apply for. Like, there's like, w- I think we're pretty open that way. Where I I just dealt with someone else getting a job somewhere else where they had like a totally non-related issue from 20 years ago, yeah. and they didn't get the job because of this. Wow. And and the area that they were applying for is like in high need of people and it's like man uh, yeah, why would you not 
you know, yeah. the, and, and I get it where they applied. There's a pretty bureaucratic process, and I understand that those are in place for a reason. But at the same time, it's like, well, this is why smaller companies can move quicker on and better on these things right. and how they tend to grow because they're able to be a little bit more flexible where this is like – that 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 company really shot themselves in the foot by not hiring this person, mm-hmm. and um, so a lot of fire departments that do lie detector tests. Whoa! And I know most law oh. enforcement do that too. You know what? So I know that. I know someone that went a yeah. uh, firefighter that went through a lie detector test. And so, what kind of question can I can I ask? No. I, I've never taken one. I, I don't want to. Uh, okay. When I got on. Yeah, I don't want to like give away the secrets wow. beforehand so people can <laughs> prep for them, but. <laughs> I want to take a lie detector test one day, but one. like I want to approve the questions <laughs> right yeah. before I go into it, <laughs> no, just gonna in case. We're gonna, <laughs> yeah. we're gonna come up with the line. Of yeah, no, never mind. I don't want to do a lie detector test. <laughs> Delete that. Rad. Yeah. It seems like you're already nervous enough. Yeah. In an interview and then having to yeah. do that. Come on. Oh uh, yeah, that would yeah. be rough. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a weird one. I guess like I, I don't even know what could be relative like. I guess law enforcement, I could see that more. I know they said that drug questions come up a lot. Yeah. You used it. You well, used and it. the person that I know that yeah. that um, did the lie detector test for the job, it was a drug question sure. that, that – and they were in a state where marijuana was legal. Right. <laughs> but it didn't matter. Yeah. They're like, well, you know, if you're in charge of someone's life and it's like – Right. That's a hard one for me. I've – and I've never, I've never partook, so I feel like I can, I can say this freely. Like, I, it's, it's silly to me. Like, well, do you ask about drinking? Like, just because someone smoked before, right? Uh, that's not to say that they're going to smoke while they're on the job. Like, if they've drank before, they're not going to drink on the job. Smoking what though? Mm-hmm. Weed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not and, crack. Well. Ah. Well, I think that the, the <laughs> I think the questions would be more pointed. Yeah, this person really lost right. the job because of weed, where weed was legal. Yeah. And I'm like, that's silly to me. Why would you do that, you know, when yeah. you could just smoke crack, too? It's like, you know. <laughs> I don't, and I guess that's the slippery slope. It's like, well, what drug is okay? Like, right. I don't know, dude. Well, like, I think, I think employers are trying to keep up with it. It's yeah. changing so much right now. Yeah, yeah we've never drug tested ever right. because I'm like, no, I know we'll lose – Half our staff, you know, it's like a bunch of artists on staff, and you know, like it's just like that's a I don't know, that's a silly one to me. Like, agreed. Uh, but I think employers are trying to keep up. What if you get somebody that's? Oh no, 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 no! Don't get me wrong. If you get injured or you wreck a vehicle on the job, like right. by all means, you're, you're going to get drug tested. Like, and you got to know that's coming, that's and you exactly. shouldn't be. That seems like common sense, right? You shouldn't be intoxicated, like, and and I, I would I definitely draw the hard line there. But I will say this, and and I hope my my freaking owners aren't watching. I had a um, employee come to me a few years ago, and I'm I'm still so grateful that they felt comfortable enough to come to me and talk to me about this. And they're like, look, I have a really hard time focusing. Um, I really, I, I, I'm going to the doctor. They want to put me on Adderall. They want to put me on this or that. He's like. I'm pretty good at focusing when I smoke weed, just not crack, just so we're clear. Uh, and so he's like, what, how would you feel if I tried, you know, a little bit of the, the reefer, devil's lettuce, instead? And I'm like, I hold no moral, like, parameter on any of this stuff. Like, a drug is a drug. I'd rather you actually do that instead, but let's just try it out and, and like, let's see obviously we never had this conversation well three days in he's like no i just got super high and like yeah i i he did he did focus better he or she did focus better but uh but he also made more he or she made more mistakes right. so and and like we had that conversation i was like all right well let's figure out the best line for you but i'm like the, I, I hold no moral distinction between Adderall and, and weed. If you think that's better for you, fine. They're both drugs in my eyes. Like, right. it's not the end of the world. So, But that's a situation where they're also behind a desk, not moving. You know, like, it's just, it's, it, they're not using a forklift or something like that, yeah. you know. So. They're just, they're just using a fork. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. He's really eating a lot of his desk right now. He went to lunch an hour early. Yeah, well, see, I'm okay with, like, conversations like that, but I get really frustrated when people do eat at the desk. I'm like, you can't do both effectively. You can't eat right, and you can't, you know, work. Like, something yeah. is, is slacking there. Um, 
So I'm weird about that kind of stuff. Like you can do it every now and then, but well, because here's what happens. We, I mean, yeah, really though, don't. Yep, we have an hour lunch that we provide, right? Which to me is too long anyway. When I started there, I'm like, man, I got like, I would go up back before all the lights were on 200. I would take my bike and I would literally drive up to the Withlacoochee River, swim for like 25 minutes, and then cut or fish, and then come back. And I'm like. This is way too much time in the day. Like, I'd rather just leave half an hour early and just take a half hour lunch. It was a different time back then. Yeah, it was. Old man. These used to be citrus groves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Citrus yeah. But uh, so we give them an hour. And so what was happening is, like, people would just go do something for a full hour, mm-hmm. take a little, few, few minutes extra, and then they'd come back and try to eat at their desk. And I'm like, no, that's not how this works. Now, every now and then, you got to run to the DMV or something. Fine. Three hour lunch. Break. Right. But yeah, I'm generous. But <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I'm just saying, you know, you can't do that every single day. Like, you go out for an hour, yeah. hour and ten, and then come back and then try to eat at your desk. Like, no. Uh, and we're on the. I mean, I'm talking about people that are on the phones too. Like, chewing. And yeah, and come oh. on, that's not gonna work. Get it together. Anyway, Tumblr's back on the rise. So get your uh, your usernames yeah, now. It's a big circle we took. I gotta be careful. Because whenever a new social media pops up, I just hop on and I try to get my name Space right away. Hay. Right, Space Hay is one of them. Yeah. But then I was like, oh, I don't know what Getter is. I'm gonna get on Getter, right? So I get on. What? Tell us more about Getter. I would get so on I, that. I, I heard of that. I get. Yeah. Well, don't sign up because <laughs> <laughs> unless you want like former QAnon people that are trying to find their new conspiracy. Oh, okay. But like, I was like, yeah, I'll get on this or what was the other one? Uh, no, yeah, not him. Yeah, grinder. Uh, no, uh, parlor. So parlor. Oh, yeah. When that like blew up and it was like, yeah, this is like far right's Twitter. I went to go check it out and I had like a, a login saved and I was like, oh. <laughs> and it was something I created in like 2017, well before it was like what it is now. And so then people were posting on Instagram and this is like the dangerous side of like just attacking what you think is extremism without knowing the full facts. So people are like, go use this like finder to see what one of your friends is on. Uh, yeah, I'm not kidding you. On Parler. On Parler. And, you know, uh, address them, delete them, block them, deplatform them. And I'm like, dude, this is something I created in 2017 before this was like what it is right now. Right. You know, um, but I do always want to try to get that just just in, or at least just in time. Like, give me the, give me one of those two, and I'm good. Um, but now I'm like, well, now I got to be careful because then it could turn into some like, yeah. you know, yeah. extremist <laughs> social media platform that I'm connected to. Like, no, I was just trying to get my name early. Yeah. Yeah. I was ahead of the ter- I was ahead of the curve. Yeah, I try, but it doesn't always work. No. I did it with Snapchat. I'm just just in time on Snapchat. Do you have your dot .com? Yes, I do. It took me years to get it. Man. I just had this conversation. How many domains do you own? I have a feeling you've got a handful. Um, not as many. I mean, because I, it, it, you know, it's annoying to re-up them right now. I Probably 25, 30, something it's like more that. more than the average person, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, you know, as you guys know, I, you can make money on, on holding domains. And I don't typically try to do it. There's only one that I try to, well, there's a few that I try to do to be petty, <laughs> to be vindictive, uh, and one that succeeded. But other than that, um, yeah, I, you know, mainly I'll just do it like, oh, okay, I'll just put this back on the market. I'm not trying to make a ton of money on it or anything, or like snag someone's name that they can't use. I tried to get Shane Pack. Uh, I had a like a seven-year timer set, and the minute it came up, I was like midnight trying to like get it, you know, trying to get his uh, domain, but he was able to. He got it. Yeah, it was. Uh, he, he auto. Re- it was like uh, his auto renew didn't work because it was like an old um, credit card or something like that, you know, because he's had it so long. And I was like, oh, I'm finally gonna get it. I'm gonna get his domain, and it didn't work because they give you like thirty or forty five days. Yeah. Have you sold any? Yeah. Really? Yeah. The actually the the biggest sale, I've had a, a couple of decent sales, but the biggest sale is a URL I bought for these guys. Like, hey, in case you want to use this, and it, if someone doesn't use it, I just put it on the market, and it happened to just be. You guys mind if I say what it was? Yeah, right. It happened to be culturecure.com, and so at the height of the pandemic, well, I don't know what the height is because this is like 
at one of the first heights of the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, I just got a notification that's like, hey man, you got you know twenty five hundred bucks that you need to. Uh, um, what, what is it called when you spend? No, escrow. You have 2500 bucks in escrow. you got to release this domain name. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, it's for the culture care. And I'm like, I guarantee I know what this is for. So, um, yeah, we sold that one. That's that's the last one that I sold for a decent amount. I think I sold one for... Site. Yeah, pull it up. Let's see what they did. Awesome. Uh, we had, at work, we had behind Life Behind Bars. And the 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 goal for them initially was to do, like, a motorcycle apparel mm. company oh, yeah. and then the well, whoever paid you for it they are still redirecting to theculturecurators.com so. yeah the last time I checked it still was too Perfect. um yeah right <laughs> so um the life behind bars what they ended up doing with it is um it's like a uh bartender's lifestyle blog. Uh, okay. So, but they pay good money for it. And I think that, you know, they try to sell stuff. And the thing with URLs is, A, they'll buy them just to try to resell them. So someone probably bought that thinking, oh, I'm going to resell this, you know, because I had just kind of a, a, a floor level set for it. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Like, I'll have, I have a few other, like, Two word domain names. Mattfisher.com. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Mine was this, like, guy that tried to get into, like, blues country music like 15 years ago and uh it just it just took a long time for me to to actually get the site but i finally got it and it's literally just pictures of me and it's like hey i just wanted this so i could have my email address so did you ever uh does the person who kind of stole your instagram page do they still do that like, they you... sent me so yeah i had uh i had someone uh snag my pictures and i only found out because someone sent me like, hey, this person's been, like, b messaged me, mm -hmm. and I thought it was you, and I can't remember what the, it was like Richard Mackey. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah that's what it was. <laughs> and so this guy took my pictures, and what's weird is, like, he took, like, screenshots of my stories and posted them, and my stories are a little bit more intimate, like, me and my kids and stuff like that sometimes, and, like, and so it was like, yeah. Nick Slocum. No, I don't think so. It was, like... The captions were like no super, like they were like, oh, you know, just trying to be the best dad that I can be. And it was weird. It was weird. And then, so people were like, no, no, this guy's like catfishing. And then he sent me a message at one point because I was like, well, I'm not going to block him because I want to make sure that, like, I want to be able to just keep reporting and reporting and reporting. And so he sent me a message and was like, he or she or whoever it was, was like, you don't know who you're messing with. It was like some weird ominous and like I'm taking screenshots of all these um, conversations and I'm like well sure if it shows my picture talking to them and doesn't show a username that could be like not great because I don't know what they're saying but ultimately I'm like well I'm just going to trust that people know who I am and that like it's an obvious fake and that I've called it out enough that people know that if they get a message from this person it's not me uh, but he ultimately it got deleted. I don't know if he deleted it or if Instagram finally deleted it. But that was the weird thing is like I'm thankful all the people that went on and reported this guy. Yeah. But Instagram let it stay up for months. Would you like to meet him? Yeah. <laughs> Richard, come on yeah, in. Right? <laughs> yeah. Can we get him on the couch? It wouldn't have bothered me as much if he had not taken pictures of me and my kids. Like that that was and like talk about like being a dad and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, that's that part was like it's I don't like that part. Like whatever, you want to try to use my face. Good luck hasn't worked very well for me, so I mean, maybe it'll work better for you. Yeah, yeah, that one that one was weird. So if you've ever I, and it was uh, what we call that like uh, not invasive, but um, I don't know. It, it did when, when I saw the pictures that were like taken from my stories because I I don't I don't ever think like oh let me just screenshot this person's story. Someone that um, depends on the story. Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, as a joke, yeah, but I, that's not something that, like, I hold. What what right. also happened to me is someone that is a friend or was a friend or whatever you want to call it um, just got really upset that, like, maybe I wasn't handling the pandemic exactly like they were. Like, oh, I don't like that you're out and about. And I'm like, hey, I'm not out that much anyway. Be, like, whatever. Like, you've got your opinion. It's fine. We're going to deal with it two separate ways. And then they sent me a screenshot 
of a story from months before where we had taken a trip with some friends that while it was like, you know, November of 2020. And it's like, yeah, but we'd also been around them enough that like they were one of our families that were like, look, we're around each other. Our kids are around each other. Like yeah. we're going to be okay being around each other. And so it was a screenshot of us hanging out, but they sent it months later. And I'm like, have you just been saving this? Oh, like, exactly. what is <laughs> it? And ridiculous. that's like stuff that I don't yeah. think about where like, and then other people that have told me like, oh yeah, I, I hold screenshots of people. And I'm like, that's weird to me. Super weird. You like, should not have a smartphone. Anymore. Yeah. And, and like, I think about that with like conversations that I have with friends where I'm like, man, I, I've never thought like, I'm gonna hold on to this just in case like, I want to like blackmail them. Turn like, yeah, I mean, I'll hold on to a goofy picture of somebody. Right. And that's, got a phone listen, phone. I'm well aware of that. And I'm, <laughs> I'm okay with that. Like, that's fine. Cause that's not, that's not actually vindictive, but when you're holding on to like what you think is like yeah, some yeah, kind yeah. of like moral high ground, weird screen. I, that's just, that's, that doesn't enter my mind at all. Yeah, it's a little creepy. So when you deal with it on that that aspect, whether it was that interaction with that friend or you know this random person on Instagram, it was like, oh, this bugs me more than I would have thought that it would. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is a, a, a little more um, private than I would have liked to be out there. So then it makes me think like, well, what do I want to share? What do I not want to share? And everyone kind of knows what my kids look like already. And I'm like, that kind of bugs me. But we have like a little family system in place that I hope, you know, works. Um, you know, so, and maybe I'll talk a little bit about that. It's kind of weird. I'm not gonna tell you what we do, but basically because my kids are known and even before social media, I had this with growing up with my parents because my dad was, a lot of people knew my dad and they're like, Hey, don't ever go with someone unless they have a verbal password. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's a weird saying like, and if they don't have that, if they're not told that and it, and if we use that password, it changed. Right. And so if they don't have that, you don't go with them. Wow. And especially like Theo, my, my youngest son, he's like, I, don't know, I shouldn't even put it out there, but like you show him anything and he, he's all like, <laughs> yeah, dude, let's go. <laughs> like we had to like go over this again the other day because he was like, yeah, I was talking to some dude in the front yard and he was asking about you, dad. And I'm like, oh, dude, like, come on, man. I need, I need better from you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, I, you know, if you, I, I know it sounds a little like probably over the top, but I, to me, if you have young kids that you post on social media, and even if you don't, people can still kind of like figure that stuff out. Mm -hmm. Have some kind of system in place um, so that your kids don't just go riding off with someone. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm, I like, I think in probabilities, and I'm like, it's a low probability that my kids are going to get abducted, right? But if they are going to get abducted, it's going to be someone that knows them, typically speaking. So I do want that in place. But I still let my kids, like, I'm actually a parent that probably is a little, allows my kids a little bit too much room because I had that when I was a kid. So I'm yeah. like, yeah, Maddox, like, go ride your bike and I'll see you in a few hours. Like, yeah. that's totally fine by me. And uh, where, like, some parents are like, oh, how could you do that? I'm like, he's got a phone. Like, I can see where he's at. Like, I check in with him. Like, my parents... Who were pretty protective too, but still, like they didn't see me until the lights came on. Yeah, and, I, and dark. yeah, and and that's not like, that's not just some meme that I'm like repeating. Like that's genuinely how it was for me. Like, hey, it's getting dark. The lights turned on. You need to be home. Yeah, right? Apparently, like, family passwords are popular. Oh really? Yeah, yeah I think it's. In. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's good. I think it's smart, especially again if you're if you're known in the community, yeah. you know. I like that Life 360. That's like it's funny. We talked. All right, so we talked about Life 360 before. I think we're going to end up doing it for our kids. Yeah. Um, the thing that bugged me is that they were selling information for like since like 2014 or something like oh, that. Really? Yeah, I that. but I don't, I don't think it's I don't I don't think the information. It, I think it's like they like to go to this store, yeah. so send them ads for this store. I don't think it's like yo pedophiles. Right. This is where they're at. How much money you got? Yeah. You know, like I think it's just ad space, which. It, to me, it's like, we all know it happens, but you need to be upfront about it. And they weren't right. upfront about it for years. But you like the app? Oh, it's great. Yeah, I mean, my wife's been telling yeah, me about it for a while. Yeah, my son goes fishing, and I feel a lot more comfortable. 
knowing that I can just look on there and see exactly where it's at. Yeah. And it saved him one day too because he was out there and he lost his phone. Uh, so yeah. So right on 360, I'm like, mm, right there. There it is. Oh, nice. Like, How'd yeah. you know, Dad? Like, oh, I just know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I think we're going to have to get it. Um, certainly, that's, that's yeah. something that's helpful for sure. But yeah, I'm glad to hear that family passwords are a thing and people use them. Yeah, it's good uh, advice. Yeah, I think so. All right. We're getting close. There's a couple of different topics I want to talk about, but instead I'm going to hop in and I'm going to ask, in case you guys, can you tell the people that are watching and listening that maybe don't know you what you do for a living? Um, all right, yeah. So I'm, I work for the Ocala Fire Department. I'm a captain there and I work in the Fire Prevention Division. Um, what we do is we focus on um, a lot of the new construction and existing buildings. We do inspections on those. Uh, we do plan review. Uh, we go out if you know there's a fire violation. But a big thing that we do is educate the public. So, and that's kind of one of our top missions is to get out, talk about you know, smoke detectors, uh, fire doors, things like that. And uh, and you know that we're kind of specific part of the fire department that does that. I mean, most of the guys are, are aware of you know the, the different fire safety things, but that's kind of our mission is to, to really get that information out mm -hmm. to the public. Yeah, and so <clears throat> what's interesting to me because. You really seem genuinely passionate about it. Not yeah. like, oh, this is just a job, and I clock right. in and, and clock out, and that's it. Because, you know, I know you personally, and I'll see some of your posts, and, you know, you're almost always funny. And then there's like a, yo, hey, guys, I want you to, like, close before you doze. Like, yeah. something that's, like, stuck with me. Or the sprinkler systems, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially with these two latest, like, big national fires that just happened, just oh, yeah. tragedies. And so I'll, I'll see you post about that, and... It's good for me because, and this is one of this is kind of a weird topic because I, I I've I've ruffled fe feathers with it before, but you, you can only be passionate about so many things, and if you try to be passionate about everything or you act like you're passionate about everything, it dilutes your it dilutes your message, right? There's no diluted message with what you put out there. Yeah. Like, I know that it's, like, going to be 90% funny, and then if it's serious, I'm going to read it because you're passionate about it. Yeah. It's obvious that you're passionate about it, and you must be passionate for a reason. You're, you, you know, so when I actually read through what you're saying, I'm like, oh, man. Now I'm genuinely, like, I've got to make sure that our, our smoke detectors are working. We need more of them. And then I'm like, I wonder, I know how much it costs to put in a sprinkler system. But then I'm like, I, I don't know if I could retrofit the house. And make it make sense but i'm like next house we're buying like yeah i want some kind of sprinkler system in there yeah. because it's crazy I mean, when you put up the stats like the difference that it makes and especially when you're talking new construction multi-family you know new construction yeah. like that it should be in everything yeah and it's it, so i think the fire service has really been a champion for those type of initiatives because if you can think about like steeplechase and some of those older apartments that were in the city before right um you know the, the the guys who were in my position before fought those battles and said you know this is something that we need it saves lives um and then you kind of saw now that now if you build an apartment complex you're putting it in it's already a requirement right. so kind of our the, the baton's been passed to us and we're really fighting for residential sprinkler systems right now yeah because a majority of our fire deaths are in those you know in your one and two family homes and right. it just makes sense it protects the, the, the people living in the buildings, but it also, you know, our firefighters, if you go to a fire where you have a sprinkler building, the fire's a lot less, and, you know, it controls it, uh, puts them in a lot less harm when you go Makes to, a, you know, when you go to a fire that's in an unsprinkled building, it's a lot, it's a lot more dangerous for those folks. So, you know, we've kind of got two, two driving forces there. That makes sense. Yeah. Can you pull the mic just a little bit closer to you? Yeah. I don't, or that, yeah. That's fine. That'll work. Yeah, explain clothes before you doze. All right, so I, Justin, you saw the picture, but basically, um, you know, in your home, the doors aren't really fire rated doors, but they give enough protection that when you go to bed, if you close that door and there's a fire in another part of your house, uh, the damage that's going to happen and the, the smoke spread and all that's going to be a lot less. Okay. A lot less. Yeah. Um, it's dramatic. I mean, there's been fires that have gone out and investigated, and, um, you know, you, you'll see a, a room where the door was open at the time of the fire, and there's smoke damage, heat damage. 
um, and then you open the other one and you don't even see any kind of damage inside the room hmm. maybe a little bit of maybe a little bit of soot it's wild. Um, so I mean it, it, it makes a huge difference so first things first if you can't afford a sprinkler system close your stinking doors when you go to sleep yeah and I think that's the biggest thing for me is like uh, you know commercially we, we went back and forth on whether we needed a sprinkler system and I'm like listen if our place catches fire it's all electronics anyway it's all, it's all gonna be ruined but we're all awake and alert hopefully, when we're at the job. And so we can get out. The biggest scare to me is when you're sleeping. You, you don't know what's going on. Um, so, yeah, that's just uh, – it, it's interesting to see. So if you can't afford a, a sprinkler system in your home, yeah. definitely be closing your doors when you and go to bed. And working smoke detectors, that's, that's a huge one. Um, I know we talked about it just – but the – having um, them interconnected. Yeah. So there's single station and then there's ones that are interconnected. So if there's a fire that happens on the other side of the house, if they're interconnected, they're yeah. going to talk to each other and they're going to wake you up. Okay. Smoke, det- smoke alarms are really designed to wake you up at night. If right. you're up, like, you're, like your example is great because if you're up at the house, you're going to smell something, you're going to see something, you're going to know. Right. But when you're out, I mean, that's the only thing that's going to wake you up. And, yeah. And a lot of these tragic fires that have been posted about, um, you know, they they're either didn't have a working smoke alarm or they didn't have enough. And it's... Mm-hmm very very cheap solution yeah. you know and then even getting them retrofitted you got to get an electrician in yeah. to do some of the wiring and stuff like that but still i mean when you think about like the cost of a home and then how much that is as part of the investment into it right i mean it's it, it just makes total sense. specifically think, the internet yeah and that's what yeah. gets me passionate about is because yeah you know like so one of the other jobs i do for the fire department is i'm an investigator so i go out to the fires after they happen and i get to meet with the people um, that had the fire, and that is hard. Man. Yeah, you see right. somebody lose everything right. that they had, and yeah. have no insurance, and or lose a loved one. That's a, that's 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 the worst. Yeah, you know. So, and and over my career, I've been to quite a few fatal fires, and mm. you know, that's just it, it's easy to get passionate about something when you yeah. see that type of devastation in somebody's life. I mean, it's you know, the it, the hardest thing is when the family shows up. So you <sighs> have. You know, you, you, you know what happened. You yeah. understand the gravity of the situation, but then the family starts showing up. Yeah. And you see them dealing with the grief right in front of you. And so, yeah. you know, that is, that's, my, that's my motivation right there. So. You got to stop talking yeah. and start crying. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's, that's, a, yeah, that's an easy way to get motivated for sure. Yeah. You see that even once, and that's yeah. going to change your thoughts on things. I think the interconnected is for sure the way to go for us. I've already looked into it. We will be putting interconnected. And I'm, I'm genuinely grateful for for, for people that do have those passions that like, again, your, your message isn't diluted because you're posting about something different every week and right. you know, like, hey, this is what I do, this is what I've seen, this is the, the information that I have. Sure. Like, cool, it, it's changed my mind on it. For, and not necessarily changed my mind, it's alerted me to how much of an issue it is or can be and that something needs to be addressed. So, I like it. I love that you post, you know, yeah. even though like some of the stuff that you post is kind of heartbreaking, you know, it's, it's, it's in a sense that like uh, okay cool now now what do we do you know yeah. what's next i think um i think nick posted that like you know sprinkler system isn't feasible for most americans in their homes and i would say that i would assume right now yes mm-hmm. but probably in the future like so the crazy thing is that it's more reasonable than you would think Really? Um, there are systems designed specifically for a for a home. They're called a, a domestic system. Um, you know how at a business you have to have a big backflow, you oh, yeah. tap into the water supply and stuff yeah. like that. Well, the way that they design these domestic systems is it comes right off of your water meter. So as long as you're oh. getting enough water into your house, you can just. Are you saying run. water right now? Oh man, don't start with that. <laughs> I get water? yeah, water? I get killed on water? that all the time. Yeah, okay. all right. I don't know. I think it's my my parents are from Long Island, so <laughs> it, it came over. I'm so but sorry. anyway, the water. Um, yeah, it comes right off the water meter, and um, you know the 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 the, the pipe is PVC, um, so it's, it's really yeah. And so what they're looking at um, for a new home, so if it's if the home's wide open, you put a new system in, you're talking about four grand maybe. Really, four grand, which relatively Olivia paid that much for granted. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean. Like yeah. let's let's talk about yeah, you know the the overall right. cost of yeah. the house, yeah. and then if you look at the long term. How much you know that is as part of the as part of the home cost? Right, it's it's nothing. Minimal. Yeah, yeah. We we, we deal with a lot of um, 
you know, pushback from the building industry because right. they say that that's one of their points is like, well, oh, it costs too much or there's no demand. Like, yeah. the, the residents don't want it. But we've seen the opposite. Once you've educated the public and you tell them, you know, this is what it'll do for you, you're 85% more likely to survive a structure fire. I, I think yeah. the... Like, yeah, that's why. Okay, I'll take that. I think the, the biggest issue that would come up is... So if it becomes a requirement... And right now we don't have the supply to meet that demand because there's almost no supply to meet any demand right sure. now. That that's just another. And, I, and I'm not, I'm just giving, mm-hmm. you know, the devil's advocate side of that. I'm not saying I agree or disagree, but it's just another hurdle to get through. Like mm-hmm. ah, but I, well, I guess if you can do it through, with PVC, that's different because there's yeah. probably plenty of PVC right now as opposed to like actual, you know. Metal, metal piping. piping, yeah. Yeah, if they made. I think if they made it a requirement right now, the biggest problem you'd run into is just having enough sprinkler um, installers, right, to get it in. Right, that would be your. So then, but then now you're delaying the CO for someone sure. for this. That's yeah. like. So I can see where that would be frustrating, but you know, I think educating the public and creating that demand first is for sure. And you do that by what you're doing is, yeah. is educating the public. I think creating that demand and creating those installers and all of that. Um, is is definitely I, I know me personally a- after having seen your stuff and having had family members that have dealt with fires I'm like yeah uh, it seems like a minimal cost um, if you're talking about building a home already anyway obviously we're not saying that every person in the US has like oh sorry <laughs> right. cough up 4,000 bucks you know you gotta go yeah. do this um, imagine in an existing house like that'd be a it made it a little more difficult yeah. <laughs> so they, you know, they're gonna they're gonna charge if you got to get in the ceiling and move some stuff around. Yeah. So, but I mean, I, 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 but future home most builds. other industries you don't see that same kind of pushback. I mean, look, think about yeah. the automobile industry. Right. Like uh, yeah. nobody's talking about seatbelts. <laughs> like I don't know if I want that option. Like yeah. airbags. Like yeah. you're not talking about that now. They right. have the lane assist. They have all of this stuff. Right. So what sprinklers are is they're a form of like safety technology. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That have been around for a hundred years are proven. And still, yeah, that's, you get pushback. So honestly, your granite example is probably the best. Like, oh, I know. No, we know, I know how much you're going to spend when you just want new appliances. You don't even need new appliances. You just <laughs> right. want them. Right. If, right. Yeah. If, like Lowe's would put you on a payment plan, everybody had sprinkler. You know what right. I'm saying? So yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the – you know, we, we get out there, get our message out. And, you know, like I said, the batons passed to us. That's, that's now our – yeah, no, I like it. Like, okay. like you said, so steeplechase, you're saying did, does? They don't. So they that's don't. one of the older ones. And they, then, like, but so now the newer ones. All do. the new ones. So if you've seen any of the new development that's yeah. going on, a lot of those apartments, all those, they're wood construction, but they're protected through yeah. sprinkler systems. Okay. So, um, you it, know. I remember uh, driving through Orlando and seeing them. I call them like the, the matchstick homes because I'm like, oh. Yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah. like, that's all light or not, you know, like. Yeah. They're building one right near my house. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. Tuscaloosa, the new ones down Tuscaloosa, those are sprinkler. Yeah, um, you know, so so really that's changed, and it's multifamily. So the, the great thing about that is, you know, people make mistakes in their homes all the time. Right. In a single family home that affects you, in a multifamily, it's yeah, uh, it's yeah, devastating yeah. can be. Um, yeah. Well, thanks for sharing, and yeah. I hope uh, you know people take that serious and. You know, I certainly do. The interconnected, I think, is probably, like I said, going to be one of the biggest things that, that I do sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, so I've already looked into it based off of your recommendation of a couple different brands. Sweet. You getting kickbacks from that? Not at all. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I was testing you, though. I was like, it was, the CP says a specific brand when I asked for a recommendation. Yeah, like, yeah, I actually, yeah actually. You know. <laughs> Some of the building guys give me a hard time because I do push the sprinkler thing so yeah. hard. And, uh, you know, they're like, are you getting a kickback? Right. Yeah. No, man. It's, yeah. a different, it's a different type of motivation yeah. than financial. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, way different than uh, back when I went. I used to have back issues when I was younger. And I thought they were going to be with me, like, my entire life. Turns out they are just stress. Oh. Um, but I went to this doctor, and I remember him, like, uh, yeah, I was a broke kid. He's like, yeah, here's a prescription for Soma. And I was like, okay, I don't know what it was, like a muscle relaxer or a pain reliever or something like that. This is back when, like, they are handing out, like, yeah. hydrocodones, like, you know, M&Ms and all that. And I didn't really want to take a pain reliever, but I'm like, i got to do something to, to change this. And I go to Publix to fulfill it. And uh, it was like 90 bucks or something. I was like, I can't afford 90 bucks. Like, I walked over here. <laughs> like, I didn't even drive over here because gas is too expensive. <laughs> and so uh, I go back to the doctor, and I'm like, yo, 
uh, I need like something else. This is 90 bucks. He's like, no, that's, that's all we have. That's it. And so I get a call from the pharmacist at Publix and he's like, hey, you know, did you want us to, to I think they have, they'd already even filled it. And I was like, I, I, can't, dude, I can't afford it. Like, I don't know what to do. And I thought like, oh, I have to pay it. And he's like, no, you don't have to pay it, man. That's fine. He's like, well, do you just want the generic? And I was like, wait, there's a generic? He's like, yeah. It was like eight or eleven dollars, and I was like, "What?" I just asked Crazy. this guy, and then next thing you know, you know, huge legislation changes come through, yeah. and they're like, "Yeah, you can't get because doctors were getting kickbacks." And I'm, this isn't like I'm not down in doctors; not all of them were like this, but this particular person was. And I'm like, "Oh, this dude got straight up kickbacks from pushing soma," and I, you know, as a kid, and like refused to give me a generic. And I'm like, that's that's just insane to me. Do you remember when that happened with the uh, EpiPens? This was a couple of years ago. Yes. Yeah. So our son, yeah, our son has to have an EpiPen for um, carrots, of all things. Wow. But, yeah, so <laughs> Olivia goes to Walgreens, one of the places, like, yeah, just picking it up for the next year. Because mm -hmm. every year you got to give them a new one at school. Yeah. And they were like, okay, that'll be like $700, something like that. Yeah, you know, and Olivia bucks. was like, <laughs> yeah. what? That's the farmer bro that did Yeah, that. it was crazy. So I guess somebody <laughs> bought the company yeah. and then. Jack the price Martin Squickelli or whatever it is, yeah. like something like that. Yeah, he that's jacked crazy. the prices way up. And, you know, that's just I, – I, I I didn't mean to laugh at the allergic to carrot things, but I literally was just thinking about this because I'm allergic to chickpeas. Of all things, chickpeas. <laughs> yeah. And uh, – I was about to make a joke. I'll tell you off here. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was going to say, you people might call them carbonzo beans. Yeah. No. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, right. Uh, but I'll have people that are like, oh, I've never heard anyone that's allergic to chickpeas. Surely you're not allergic to chickpeas. And I'm like, <laughs> why would I make that up? Because like, yeah. you don't what? like them. Yeah. No, I, I do. do. That's like the thing them. is I do like them. And I have, to, I have to find out every six months that I'm still allergic. And it's just getting worse like and worse. Itch in your throat or oh, it started like off it. that way. And that's yeah. why I was still eating it. Because hummus. I love hummus. Right. And then... <laughs> What then I got to where like my face is this. And I'm talking like this because I can't really breathe. Yeah, wow. my throat starts closing up. Yeah, and so every I, now it's like every 12 months I try to find out because it was getting pretty bad there for a little bit. But yeah, it's like I, it's so weird that people are like, no, I don't think you're allergic. Like that just seems weird. Like I mean, it is, but you you can be allergic to anything. Yeah, I, 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 know, yeah. I, I wish it were just. Is that what he gets? Does he get the same thing I get, or does he actually like? So he's gone almost into full anaphylactic. Yeah. Before. So we keep Benadryl and stuff like that. It happened at Legoland. Yeah. Where they were they were uh, making a sandwich where there was they do the salads is what we found out. Right. And it, it makes the two. And that's luckily crazy. we had all the stuff with us. Yeah. But yeah. It was pretty scary. Yeah, oh, that's right. nuts, man. <laughs> yeah, I've gotten uh, the one night I got pretty close, but I just kind of like laid there with like you know tons of Benadryl on me for a couple hours so like alright cool I can it breathe off. again yeah. nicely done is that when you were aggressively dipping uh, that was not when I was aggressively <laughs> dipping uh, yeah that's a yeah a little little uh, late night snacking at Matt and Lauren's house and she pulled out hummus and I, I knew I was allergic but they didn't know so I was like I'm gonna eat as much as I can right until they figure <laughs> out kicks in. And so, because I was like, I got a secret. I'll tell you when I'm done, you know. <laughs> and then, I don't know if Lauren even either found out or she remembered and was like oh, grabbing my arm and yelling to Matt, he's like aggressively dipping. Because <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't get to eat hummus anymore because I'm allergic to it. Yeah, not great. Oh, man. Especially not after a night of drinking. But hmm. Smart, yeah. he's a smart guy. Yeah, in case you didn't know, alcohol genuinely affects your inhibitions. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> it actually affects that part of the brain. I didn't actually know. I started drinking later on in life. I found these things out the hard way. Really? Yeah. Trial it's, and error. Yeah. It's... But now you know. I just thought like, oh, that's an excuse, mm -hmm. and it is. Like you know, you still shouldn't do things that you shouldn't do when you're drunk. But like, oh, it actually affects that part of your brain. Got it. It says this is a great idea. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you're allergic and you don't get to eat it. Dip away, <laughs> idiot. Aggressively. Thanks for sharing with us today. I genuinely appreciate it. Thanks for being on. And hopefully uh, some people took up some serious nuggets of information there. Yeah. Appreciate you all. We'll see you next week.